I consider myself fortunate to speak before you today as I give my personal testimony. I was born in undetermined religion because I've never seen my parents gone to any churches before. Even though my father was a Seventh-day Adventist, he became an active member of the church when he got married to my mother. In my young age, before I accepted Jesus Christ, I experienced a lot of hardships in life. One of those is when my father decided to quit from his job in the Nestle company for some reasons. I thought that's the end of our aspirations in life because I thought that money is the most important thing in this world. I almost forgot that there is God, our creator and author in our lives. However, our minds awakened when we, my parents, as well as my siblings, accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Since then, I really saw the difference before and after accepting Jesus Christ in our lives. He really changed me a lot. I hold on to his promises, though I was not able to fulfill my dream to become a doctor in medicine. Yet, I was able to finish my baccalaureate degree, which I learned to love from them on. Apparently, it is the source of our living. I really thank God for that. My faith was forsaken many times. I was in I was in comatose for three days and had mad leukemia in my childhood. I was also crippled for two months when I was a teenager. I've experienced miscarriage for four times, had sepsis and acute pneumonia in my married life. Those trials and afflictions before brought me a closer relationship to God, even in times of Typhoon Yolanda. With God's providence, we survive it all. But then today, but then lately, rather, I mourned my mother dear's death and troubled with overload depths. I thought those circumstances will strengthen my faith in God. Subsequently, I was anxious of everything. I lost, I lost hope and worried on how to handle my encumbered obligations at home and school as well. It makes me feel that I cannot bear it anymore. I cried many times whenever I missed my mom. And when I picture out what would be our life ahead, if we can't able to settle our accounts, especially this time of pandemic, I had the feelings that I can survive at all. Therefore, I came up to the point that I was gone my own way with no thought of God. Eventually, I felt forsaken and so depressed. Currently, I was touched by a movie entitled The Cookville Miracle. And when I heard one of the soundtracks of the said movie entitled A Child's Prayer, my heart was melted away 
with tears in my eyes, reflecting how God is great and wonderful. By the help of God and family's unfailing love and moral support, I was relieved from despair. My perspective towards and towards trials and temptations and circumstances turn a positive one and I considered it all as part of my journey in this world that I can be able to surpass as long as I'm walking with God and have faith in Him. I've got courage from Isaiah 40 and comforted by this text in Matthew 6 verses 25 to 34 saying, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what would will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lives of the fields grow. See how the lilies of the fields grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet, I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith, so do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And I was given hope by reading the book of John 15, 7. It says that if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will and it shall be done for you. And also in the book of Matthew 7, 7, saying, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. I'm so glad and lifted up again of this reassurance of God that he will be with me always. He will be with me always, no matter how difficult my life would be. I believe in this quote saying, life is not perfect, so we must get going. Babies don't walk in the first time they try, but eventually they get it right. When we focus on problems, you will have more problems. When we focus on possibilities, you will have more opportunities. That we will surrender to God our trespasses, burdens, anxieties, troubles, trials, afflictions, and even regrets in life, and have faith for the day of the Lord is coming, according to John 14 verses 1 to 4, saying, do not let your hearts be troubled. 
Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were the if we were not so, I would have told you I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. That you that you also may be where I am. And in First Corinthians 1 verse 8 saying, He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless everyone. Let's keep the faith burning till Jesus comes. Once again, happy Sabbath.